Hello everyone, I'm Robert Welsh. And I'm James Welsh. And this is your weekly reminder, we are not the same person. At all! In this period of time that I forgot that we're doing. We'll play it here. What do you mean? We're not the same person, but in this period of time. You get it. No. She gets it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Like, we're not the same person in the... What year are we doing? 40s. The the Second World War. That's not a year. <laughs> no, but it's like, we're doing We're that. doing that period of time, and we're not the same people in that period of time. Were we the same people in that period of time? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> why, does, why does it need to make sense? I'm aghast with confusion. When does it ever make sense? Yeah, no, Okay. Okay. Now the intro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. here we are. How have you asked me to introduce this one? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. I'm just wearing a costume. <laughs> I look, I look great. You look fantastic. <laughs> that ginger and um, what colour is this? This is green. red and green. Yeah, it really suits you. Accessory of the time. Yeah, accessory of the time. No, please. Oh. Please, go ahead. So, to, when was the war? Here we are with another historically accurate skincare makeup residual. <laughs> And you may have guessed it. We are doing the Second World War, so that's 1939 to 1945. Yeah, the Second World War. He has IBS today. I have IBS today and it's (laughs) frazzled me. We're doing the Second World War. (laughs) What were you going to say? I don't know. Okay, your medals are curling up. (laughs) I'm having a rough time today, but listen, I am a, a, a lady of war. Yes, and I am but a... I was gonna say refugee. Evacuee. I am but an evacuee. Where are you going? Um, to the country to start my adventure. I assume Cornwall. Yes, probably Cornwall or Dover. <laughs> so I used to be obsessed with the war. I feel like England are obsessed with the war, especially when it comes to teaching it in school. Mm. Like the history. because. Mm. That's all we have. It in was England. a big pin. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have. Like older people world always world. go on about the war because they experienced it, and what a time! And what a time! Um, very, tra- uh, <laughs> mm. very difficult time. I feel for the country. <laughs> <laughs> and we can see by your ration book. This is a terrible opening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> let's just let's just get into it. No one wants to be here today. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. I was talking about rations because it really did affect everything: beauty, mm-hmm. um, fashion, hats, hats. fashion, cl- uh, hats. Mm-hmm. And I do feel like the women during that time who still want to wear makeup and look their mm. best really were like the original DIYers when it comes to skincare and makeup and not in that horrible, annoying five minute class made up, yay, <laughs> but because they were making the best of what they had. And yeah. some of it's actually really, really impressive. It is. Yeah. Shall we? Yes, and there's also quite a few inventions during this time as well. So let's get into it. Skincare's going to be pretty quick because not a lot changed during... I'm going to put down my book. Yeah, put my book <laughs> put down. Put it down. Not a lot changed during this time. So cleanses, right? We still had uh, cold cream and it was ponds. They were like the main cold cream vanishing cream. They've carried on through all the time, They still they? sell them in buits. 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 Any pharmacy you go to, you will still see ponds. And not a lot has changed. They have a few variants, a few added in fragrance and, you know... Um, um, things like hyaluronic acid has been added in, but really it's the same basic thing on your face, wipe away, with probably back in those times a really pointy tissue. Sharp, sharp, jagged. Yeah, <laughs> news, probably newspaper. Probably, we don't know because we haven't done any research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's entertainment. Yeah, it's just light entertainment. <laughs> Now, toners is where it gets a little bit interesting because a lot of time nowadays, people are like, toners aren't necessary. And it's absolutely true. But toners were one of the original steps in a skincare routine, considered a requirement and a must do. So cleanser, toner, moisturize. Mm-hmm. Moisturize. Mm-hmm. However, back in the days, 
that we've talked about, they were called tonics. <laughs> However, that we've talked about, that we've talked about. I keep forgetting the, um, <laughs> the the one where we wore the thing, the yes. other year when yes. we wore the stuff. Yeah, we did. For, we did all those history. Yeah, we put cereal on our face. Yeah, uh, they were called tonics, mm. and they promised things like. Um, Smaller pores, whiter skin, whiter skin, rejuvenating the skin. A lot of what nowadays could be considered drug claims, false advertising, false advertising. There was no science behind, you know, behind yeah. this. Yeah. So, and tonics were very, very popular with aestheticians, beautyists, <laughs> mm, beauty, Be- beauticians, um, and they were what we call today astringent. So they were alcohol heavy, um, really quite stripping on the skin. So they skin. kind of weren't, aren't really the same thing as a toner, really, are they? Well, that's just how tones have developed over time. More time. Right, 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 right. Yeah. However, it was in 1940 that the FDA actually said you cannot call these products. Tonics. tonics anymore because that promises something and you can't make all these claims so that's when they then started calling them toners oh yeah ingredients exactly the same still alcohol heavy however they were marketed as ph balancing and refreshing products oh, right nice. which is what we see today yeah. so they were kind of like then turned into more of the tones we see too with actives in um hydrating ingredients but still pretty harsh right they were yeah. still like yeah so the closest thing that i think we have to an old-fashioned astringent is any kind of teenage toner acne toner wallpaper stripper wallpaper stri- <laughs> i will not say the name of this brand magic <laughs> magic do you have pads so we can use these did they use pads? Yes, they used okay. cotton pads back then. <laughs> I wish my fingers more slight. <laughs> Here you go, James. One for you, one for me. Thank you very much. And I feel like in the war time, there was a real friendly spirit, so we'll be really friendly. Please, can yeah, I? But a have lot of some? people oh. still didn't like people that Roll much <laughs> <laughs> no there was a Real good sense community, of community spirit yeah now your skin is probably going to go red over this because we have very reactive skin oh good but yeah so that's the thing is when people think of toners nowadays they still think of these old-fashioned astringents right but, Sorry, Karen. <laughs> and you can smell the alcohol. You can feel it stinging on the skin. Yeah, um, you can. And it was very much the f- form of you could feel it working. You can feel it working. You feel it, so it must be. But it's not. It's, that's not what that is. So, yeah, these were very, very popular. So, they in history, toners kind of went from being water with, like, roses Rose. and herbs and, I don't know, spiders. Ox fat. Yeah, yeah, ox yeah, 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 yeah. That's one, one of them. Spiders, very popular. <laughs> to these alcohol-heavy astringents to what we know today as hydrating toners. Yeah. You can smell it from here. I love it. It smells like... It reminds me of our Yulv. Yulv. Moisturizers, vanishing cream. We've done all this before. Marcus, insert a clip here. <laughs> Aerodynamic headpiece. Yeah. But I also have it here. Oh, but you also have it here, which we are going to apply in just a minute. Right, I'm sorry. I'm no, 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 way you, ahead of myself. You, no, no, it's just no, that it's for war and I just want to keep on. No, <laughs> let's apply it actually. So Vanishing Cream was still around. It's it's pretty much like one of the only moisturizers. Um, again, not a lot changed. I look like an advert for Vanishing, an old advert for Vanishing You do. Cream. Help your country use Vanishing, Vanishing Cream. Cream. Vanishing Cream wants you. No, that's the American one, Van- isn't it? Thingy Sam wants you or whatever it's called. I'm just going to play a bit because, oh, <laughs> oh no, my evacuation hat. <laughs> We've got a little bit of something extra coming that I will just apply. You don't have to. No, I'm excited to try. And it's called Vanishing Cream. Do you know why? Because your skin completely disappears. You go. You just <laughs> go. <laughs> it's because it vanishes into the skin. Oh. Yeah. Yes, That's disappointing. Is. I know. I mean, back then, though, they were like, you know, not as creative. Can you imagine? Be like, this this cream, this new cream, completely absorbs into your skin. Like, well, yeah, you'd be yeah. like, well, of course it fucking better do. <laughs> but that's the thing with the cold creams. Mm. Obviously, you had your cold cream and vanishing cream, so they were exact opposites, you yeah. know? So with cold creams, people would often leave them on overnight as well if they mm. had dry skin. Mm. With oily skin, you'd leave it off. But cold creams would act as, like, an emollient occlusive layer, trapping everything in, and had very typical ingredients of a moisturiser back then, like beeswax and... Mm. Um, what was the other one? Beeswax. <laughs> 
Bees fat. Bees fat. I, I wrote it down. <laughs> and that's because these cold creams mm. had typical moisturizing ingredients in that you still see in some moisturizers today. Not so much beeswax, but like mineral oil and cetyl alcohol. Cetyl alcohol. alcohol, which I can never pronounce properly. Dubious place. Well, but yes, here's an exciting thing. And I'm cheating a little bit here, but sunscreen was invented within this time period. It actually started its invention process in the 1920s. Greater. However, Franz Greater, probably pronounced that completely wrong. It sounded, um, good. It sounded good. It sounded great. <laughs> um, pretty much is known as the inventor of sunscreen. Right. Because he made a little prototype where he was on a mountain and he got burnt. Really, was, actually? Yeah, actually, yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm gonna make something for this. So it was kind of all right. And then he kind of went back to the drawing board and reformulated it and created what we now know to be Piz the Boon. This was in 1946, but really from like 1939, I think it was, to 45, it really went through a process of um, formulation changes. So like things like cocoa butter being added to it to make it actually glide over the skin and less of a paste. Um, and you usually get these in like small tins, kind of like this kind of thing. This wartime tin. Right it's wartime tin, a little bit bigger than this. Um, however, they were very, Obviously, white casty. Yeah, yeah. So I found the whitest cast sunscreen I could find. Good news, I'm just everyone. Use it. Good news, everyone. <laughs> I'll do take do a you want to use it? Yeah, I'll take a piece. You don't, can't just use a piece of sunscreen. <laughs> but yeah, it was really the the time sunscreen became properly commercially available. I guess you could say. I wonder if people thought it was necessary or if they were like, "We've lived this long without it. Why do we need it now?" Probably not. I mean, I think back then it was made for really like our troops. Yeah. Um, people going like camping and hiking and skiing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, Cause it wasn't until, I think it was the 1970s where UVA and UVB um, filters were added. Um, into the sun. No, hang on, I got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was really taken seriously until the seventies when getting a tan was very, very popular. Yeah. But also people started to talk more about UVA and UVB. Uh, people weren't using sunscreen because they wanted as much tan as possible. So no, I think it was seen as more of like, it's all in your hair. <laughs> I know. It's like, that's the problem with this. It's like, and in the beard line. I'm gonna leave it though, cause that's just how the times was. That's just how it, and it looks good. Yeah, like who, like, doesn't matter. Who doesn't want sunscreen in their hair? Shall we quickly talk about our troops? Yeah. Yeah, so of course the- <laughs> You want? <laughs> I guess. The war. People are out fighting for our great country, America. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> of course, they didn't care how dewy and plump and moisturized their they skin didn't, They didn't want to look like no. fresh pictures. Yeah. <laughs> They were getting things like pesticides like put on them so they weren't getting like um uh taken like what's it called like bug infestations. Yeah, they were everywhere. They were right? everywhere yeah. all the time. Basic hygiene was actually part of the regulations no of way. what they had to do. So yeah. as along with keeping clean shaved face or a very um well maintained beard, basic hygiene was a must. And they were constantly reminded by superiors that you've got to have your basic hygiene. So they're actually supplied with a kit. No, I don't know. Yes. Well, now you do. Yeah. This kit, let me just look at my notes. <laughs> These kits included a toothbrush, razor blades, toilet soap, and shaving cream. And they were also giving chewing gum and candy, tobacco, matches, and cigarettes. Oh, can you imagine something like, here's your necessaries and it's um, cigarettes, cigarettes and a bit of vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can really presume that the soap that they were given was just used everywhere, right? Yeah. yeah you don't have to be, I mean, it cleans. I mean, who fucking cares? They're it fighting cleans. for their lives and the country. Uh, yeah. They don't care, you know. Um, however, also depending where people were stationed and situated, they were often recommended not to use the water. So it's a given yeah. that they would often go days without doing anything. I mean, why would you? It doesn't would you rather sense. smell a little bit or have severe diarrhea? It's up to you, up to you. But then if they use the water, they would also get skin mites, um, like skin rashes and infections and stuff like that, depending on where they were. But also when people were posted in places like North Africa, where there was water shortages, mm. what, what can what you, you do? do? And that's that for mm. skin. Well, hi, uh, how about makeup? Oh, but hang on. Whoops. So, <laughs> also <laughs> overall, skincare and makeup, looking your best and caring for yourself and looking um, 
healthy. Having a healthy visage was all was all a must. Yeah, I think it, again it goes in times of like how, what we've seen in the past, oh, where broken. people were like, oh, the the way of looking healthy was to look like the opposite of what was going, going on in on your world, time, yeah. or I mean, in some cases, literally looking like you have an oh, infectious shit. disease. Let's talk about makeup, James. Shall we? Have you heard of makeup? Not. At this moment in time. It's a face accessory. So, um, (laughs) again, back in this time, we're thinking healthy. We're thinking, listen, everyone was on rations. Mm. Everyone was kind of, I guess they were healthier than we are now, but it wasn't the best of times. Makeup, beauty, it was all encouraged. It was to be like, you know, come on, everyone. Everyone still wanted to look their best. And was like, come on. Yeah, they were all like, they're like, no, come on, no, come on now. And that was the, the one of the main ways they pushed it was was beauty. Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't know I was kind of confronting you today. No, I didn't. <laughs> So should we just start with skin and let's start with make um, makeup makeup <laughs> <laughs> with foundation, of course, Mr. Mr. Max Factor. So he was kind of like I'm going to say he was in charge in general of everything of everything. Right? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but he of course had his pancake, the famous pancake foundation. I don't know what this is. Why is it called pancake? Because it's it look- like flat. Right, right, right. I don't think that's why it's called Pancake, but that's how it was. And it was more theatrical. It mm. wasn't it wasn't that mainstream yet. Mm. But then he made it mainstream by putting it in shops and pan sticks. So we that's actually cute. have a man, man's factor. <laughs> Happy man's factor. Happy Lettmas. <laughs> <laughs> National Letmus Day. We have a pan stick, mm-hmm. and this is from the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't look at it. Don't look. <laughs> but yeah, it would have been something similar to this. Very yeah. greasy. Yeah, very theatrical makeup. But here's the deal. They didn't want full coverage back then. It was all natural. All like, you know, I've just got nice skin. I'm doing things that are important right now. I don't need yeah, this. Yeah, I don't need this right now. So we're going to apply it with our fingers. Cool. So we're going to take a little bit from the pan stick. <laughs> <laughs> and then just use it straight into her face. Very, very lightly, very lightly. What, just in like bits, areas there? I mean, imagine how you would apply a moisturizer, but not very heavily. Like, do the same. I don't know what you mean. I'm gl- like this, look like Low this. gal. Like this, look like this, look like just this. Just put loads on. No, because you can blend it out. Right, 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 Haven't right, right. you heard of blending? Um, on and off, yes. So, and also they did favour a little bit more of a sun-kissed look. Oh. So we're, we're, I think everything we've done, we had to be extremely pale. Yeah, this is probably the first time we're purposely going a shade darker. A bit of Santa. <gasps> oh my God. What? <laughs> Fuck's sake. <gasps> what? There's ridges in this mirror and I saw my face in here and I thought there was some behind me. Oh my god. If your room's I... haunted, something always happens in here that isn't actually scary but is. You mean science? Yeah. You mean things that happen all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I looked at the mirror and it was a reflection. <laughs> what on earth is going on? <laughs> And I suppose they would have used their fingers. Things were rationed, and I think, like, makeup tools wouldn't have been a first priority, you know what I mean? Yeah. Notice how we keep saying we think because we've not actually done any. <laughs> no one corrects us below. You know what we said? You know, in one of our, our Victorian when we were talking about Queen Victoria. Oh, yeah. And we mentioned that she wore black and she was like a style mm. icon. Yeah. People were like, you know, she wore that because her husband died. We're like, yeah, we yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, Queen. Yeah, yeah, that's great. No, we know, but, you know, she's, she's I mean, still, she's style still icon. a style icon. <laughs> <laughs> That's an iconic thing to do. Yeah. Isn't that when it happened. Wouldn't you do that? Yes, I look very sun kissed. This is how I look in summer. Yeah. Actually, no, I'm still quite pale. Yeah, you're still a little bit orange. Yeah, please don't correct us because we are actual historians. What on earth has gotten into you? <laughs> You were never like this. Yeah, you never used to be like this. You never used to be like this. Shall we? Oh, where's my... What? What's happening? We're gonna, let's really heavily powder. Oh, yes. Your tag's not showing enough. Yeah, show everyone. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So here's something they used to do with powder a lot, especially Mm. in Hollywood, backestage. Um, is use excessive powder. Now, right. here's the thing. Like we were saying, the foundation back then used to be oily. It was heavy. It's not like foundation we know now. Mm-hmm. You didn't have one for oily skin. You didn't have one for dry skin. You didn't have, um, you know, all these different options. It was you use this one and you fucking deal with it. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Oh. I don't, I don't know why I said that because I didn't say anything. No. What are you threatening? <laughs> We've done our foundation. We're going to take a powder poo at her eyes. 
and then just really go for it. So here's the deal, right? You either had a powder puff or you didn't. You're forcing me into this. I'm not taking so, this bling. I I'm want to use so the powder sorry. puff, but Robert's making me use oh, the I'm cheaper ha- alternative, which is a cotton round. People had to do this. You're so disrespectful. <laughs> So you either had a powder puff. I'm clearly in the army, so... So you would probably have this. I'm in the country. (gasps) Yeah, you're in the country. You have more access to cotton. Okay. So I'm really pushing it into that foundaskian. Getting it really settled in. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Looks good. Ah! Shout with the dick. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Yeah. So now we are paid. <laughs> Sorry? We are making our skin pale. This no. is clear powder. Oh, interesting, interesting. Not all powder has a colour. Why is it white? You think it's going to be invisible just because it's clear? Oh, <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So as with any technology from the wartime, we've cut, we went into a technical hiccup. We've we don't know. Do we're not from now. Yeah, we don't know about don't technology. Know. Listen, the camera stopped recording <clears throat> and we didn't realise. We were just having such a great time. We were just going on and on and on and on. So what have we done? So listen, we have done our powder, which was great. You saw us happen. Oh. And then we went back to our good friend, Beetroot. Beetroot juice. Oh, it's really cute. It is cute when you think about it. Oh, it's so cute. And we used literally the smallest amount on the cheeks, apples of the cheeks. That's the problem. Isn't and blended upwards. But here's the thing, James's wasn't showing up too much, which is fine. Which That's is fine. what they wanted. They didn't want it to look like they were in black. No, it's just natural. <laughs> that looks good. Now explain what's going on in your eyes, because that's appeared from nowhere. I've got so much beetroot on my head. There's actual beetroot on I your face. I panicked. I panicked. Now it's everywhere. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just touched my face too much. <laughs> so on my eyes, you'll see I have this really silky smooth, <laughs> smoky eye effect. Highly pigmented. Highly very even. Yeah. And it all comes from this burnt pixacock. Oh, so. Oh, it's got Vaseline all over it, hasn't it? Yeah, but tend to light it. You don't have to light it. So. Oh, no. It's fine here. So. You just burn this piece of cork. Why can't I burn it? Because it's got Vaseline all over it. Oh. Careful. Like so. And this would have been eyeshadow. Mix it with Vaseline on the back of your hand. Or I guess they would have used, I don't know, the back of their hand. <laughs> Which I not have backs of What's hands. What's another word for back of hand? Yeah. Oh, like my hair is all coming out. Um, and yeah, mix it with Vaseline. That would have been eyeshadow, mascara, brows. I use it as a mascara and I tell you what, it's actually really nice. So the like mascara wand, like spoolie, wasn't actually invented yet just now. So we're using the classic brush. Show the brush. It it comes with one, two, three, four, (laughs) seven (laughs) edges and a a (laughs) handle to hold. It's very war time. (laughs) Now listen. We need to take a break because it's hot in this studio. And we're famous actresses on set needing a break. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Max Factor, for inventing the Hangover Heaven ice mask. Now, these were often used on movie sets. Oh. And what they are is plastic, um, little bits of plastic. (laughs) And they would be filled with water. Frozen, like ice cubes. And they'd help cool down the skin with the idea that it doesn't ruin the makeup. Cools you down, makes your skin look flawless, flawless, etc. There's a lot of glue on here and it's stinging our eyes, so they're gonna come straight back off. Wow, I feel refreshed. <laughs> this one, it's really in this one. So this one. <laughs> That's, we've done that twice now, <laughs> and it hurts every time. <laughs> Ready to go back on set. <laughs> all, ready, all ready to run lines. <laughs> wow. Wow. What were we doing? Was there something else we missed? Yes, yeah, so let's talk. We're done with Hang eyes. On, I'm uh, picking my eyes. Sure. So we're done with eyes. I think a lot of people think that there will be a flick now. That wasn't till later on, the like liquid line of flick. Right. Um, so we're not, obviously we're not doing that. Now, why would we? 
Why would we? Why would we even know? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about lips. The most. The most time for lipstick. Iconic time for yeah, lipstick. The most time. So the red that we think of this iconic red was invented by Elizabeth Arden. Which I didn't know was still back then. Called Montezuma Red. Or something like that. Something like that. So the ladies who joined the army were given this as, you know, this lipstick colour as a part of like their military uniform. Little care package. Care package. It was meant to keep up morale. Like we said, beauty everything. Imagine a man seeing a lovely lady in a lipstick. He's gonna win this war. <laughs> but really, that's what they But were really, like. that's what they were like, yeah, let's mm. do this. So then, it was so popular, everyone was like, listen, I want that lipstick. I need that to I keep need up. that. Mm. So a new shade was invented, so it's not exactly the same. And this was what everyone knows as Victory Red. Oh, which is that say classic. can you see the queen? queen. At that time. At that time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was a king, wasn't it? At that time. I can't, I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, uh, yes, and this is the red that we see, the Victory Red, which is this beautiful, mm. classic. Iconic. I- iconic. I always call it like Hollywood Red, but I think it mm. is like just, just red. Yeah. Now, I think, I actually think the red I've got, which is the closest I can find, is maybe slightly too orangey compared to Victory Red, right. which um, actually the brand Bessemer do an exact recreation <gasps> off that oh, shade. That's yeah, cool. and this is we're using Afrique from. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Listen, let's talk about lip shape. So lips would have been uh, just slightly before on this, the face been, in the middle would have been in the middle, middle <laughs> lower middle. <laughs> the lip line would have been stretched out. Sorry, we're talking about now. Sorry, would have been stretched out a tiny bit. So we're not just cupid bowing here and following a lip. We're going to follow our cupid's bow and then just go slightly over to Elon Glate. Elon Glate. Elon Glacius. <laughs> Goodbye, Elon Glacius. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so we're gonna stretch out the top lip with you, this. Yeah, you do it though, because it's part of your costume. Okay, sing to me. Oh, there'll be blue skies over the world clear so dover. We come back from the war or something. People ask if I can sing. I can. Can I do it well? Not really, no. <laughs> What's a wartime song? Oh, I've got some mortgages I want to have paid, baby. And I've got some villains I want to have laid to rest. You look like um, Christina Aguilera. How to use this book. The consumer's name and address must be written in block letters in the space provided on the reference leaf. Cooked meat. You may purchase cooked rationed meat and cooked meat shops at cooked meat shops, but only on surrender of coupon or half coupon. The coupon or half coupon must be. This is really boring. Can you hurry up? Because I also need to poo. Do you know how difficult it is to do a classic red lip? Right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Imagine you're you're at war mm. and you're like, oh, I don't think I can go on. And then here I come with my lipstick. I'm like, have you seen this? To the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> and that's makeup. Well, it's all over your teeth. <laughs> right, there we go then. That was the World War II. Yeah, yeah, I think we learned a lot. I think we learned a lot. I think you must have learned a lot. I think today we discovered how to film a video. Yes, we've been <laughs> through it all today. Um, mm. Thank you ever so much. Remember to follow us at all the above. Marcus. But like wartime. But wartime, Marcus. But like ration the letters. Yeah, only use a few only letters. Only a few letters. <laughs> So Can you show everyone what you just did? Because I tell people about this all the time and they ne- they don't... They, they was like, oh, really? That's like a, a known thing. So why do people not know it? <laughs> yeah. so, so whenever you do your lipstick, you do that and it starts going on your teeth. Yeah, because it gets all, all the gunk on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. Take that away of you. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Make sure you are subscribed for, uh, for the next video. Listen, next time... Um, it, it... What? Okay. <laughs> Bye! Bye! <laughs>